I think I'm most excited for this event just so that I can sleep after it's done. What's going on everyone? Welcome back, Road to the Scale Nationals. In this series, Matt from the Scale Builders Guild and myself are taking you through the process as we build trucks to go compete at the Sorka Scale Nationals, which will be in Leesburg, Alabama, coming up in 17 days, I believe. In two weeks, I will be traveling with these trucks, hopefully in running finished condition, on our way to that event. We'll be competing in all three classes. This will be my class one, this will be my class two, and turn into my class three. Over the last previous six episodes, I think this is episode seven, we've shown you how we have got to this point minus the most recent progress. We're starting to get to the point where these builds where things are really starting to come back together and make these things look like actual vehicles. So with that being said, let's jump into the details of what we've got completed on each of them. Starting first with the class two. As you can see, we've got the body on, I think where it's actually going to live. And we've started to come together, finishing up what parts underneath are really important. At this point, you can see that we do have an interior in there. The titanium cage is in place and starting to think about body mounting. In the back, you can see that I've added this trim panel here. Now there's one just like it on the bottom side of this body as well. You can see that. This piece is titanium, surprise. But the purpose of adding it back there is what I hope to do is build a hinged body mount. And I wanted to attach that to something rigid and safe and be pretty you know, confident that it was going to hold the body in place. So the inside portion of the hinge will mount to the back side of these pieces and it will go back and it'll attach to this new rear body mount slash bumper mount that I've made here. You can see back here, I made some new tabs, had them sent off to send, cut, send, and cut out of some thin titanium. Between that, I've also welded another piece of 3 16 titanium to create my metal bumper points, keeping things nice, light, strong, all of the above. But above there, you'll see those two little extra attachment points, and those will be the hinge portion. I've got a couple of other pieces of titanium that will then bolt to there, and we'll I have to connect the dots between those parts and the parts on the back of the bed. I didn't want to try and build that in all right away just because, uh, you know, fudge factor and how everything sits may not be 100% perfect. So I wanted it on the truck and then I'll start connecting the dots. That is still left to do though. I've got the major components sitting there and ready, but I need to put that final attention in to get that completed. Once I do that part of it, then I'll go up and handle the front body mounting. But until then, that's not getting done. Next though, you can see we've got an interior in here, a four seat interior because this does look like an extended cab truck and seats would belong in the rear. Also extra points. Now to get the four seat interior cage points, I did have to add additional down bars and crossbars. Sorker rules state that you have to have down bars and crossbars in front and behind of each row of seating. And this cage still really light. Nice little bonus of titanium. The seats in here are attached to some 0.5 millimeter thick carbon fiber. Very thin, very light, and I cut out a hole in the middle of it for the VFD shifter to pop through. Scale points. The battery for this truck sits underneath here on the slider side underneath the interior, but there's there's very little room here and that was going to make it pretty difficult to get the battery in and out when it needed to. But with the interior, I didn't want it to sit too high. I still wanted to have nice depth. So I was a bit kind of, you know, up in the air. I made some titanium plates that slide over the cage and I was just gonna find the position that I needed to have enough clearance to get to the battery. Then I was gonna weld those plates in place giving myself a rigid interior mount. But I decided to do something a little bit different. Instead, I'm gonna let those plates float on the interior cage, and I made these little hinge pieces here. So there's one on each side, and these are retained by the body. When the body comes down, these can't go anywhere. But in this case, you can swing it out like that. 
Now this has a groove on top and bottom and it slides over the interior plate and over the outside of the slider. When you swing this out, it does allow you to lift the interior up. It allows you a, you know, inch and a half or more of access to your actual battery. So when you want to swap it out, if you want to just take and put in a charge pack between each course, you could do that, or you just want easy access to the plugs, whatever it may be. It allows me to have that, you know, makes things a little bit easier. Also on the bottom side of the interior, on the other side, if you swing that out and lift it up as well, the electronics are mounted underneath of there. Now you shouldn't have to get to those very often, but in the case that you did, they still have easy access. My winch controller and my ESC are on a couple of 3D printed mounts, and then the receiver just sticks up there on its own. Right now I haven't attached it yet because I still have some things to attach for the rear steer setup. But with everything down in place, it gives me a nice rigid interior setup tons of interior space, and I've got all the elements that I need to get interior points. The dash is a first prototype. I had to do a little bit of trimming to make sure that things were going to fit into place. I need to do another round of print on this. I need to put a steering wheel on it. I did add some uh, pedals in there. I've got the shifters, adding a few scale points here and there. I think I have some more things to add, but for now, those are gonna do it. The biggest problem I have is that these plates that I made to attach the cage and everything like that, I keep calling sliders, but they don't actually extend to the outside of the body, so they may not actually uh, count as sliders, which is something that I was kind of counting on and I just lost sight of in kind of this, you know, uh, rush that I've been going in, uh, overthinking, underthinking, and uh, kind of missing the big picture on some items like this. It happens, but uh, it's unfortunate. These are 40 thousandths thick titanium, so very thin, very light. It was nice to get the cage welded to that. Once everything was all welded together, this cage is super strong. I do plan to trim this body up. Right now it's hanging about a quarter inch below the side of the slider plates. So I plan to trim that up so that it's even with that. If I need to, I can always weld an additional titanium rod on the outside to give myself those slider points that I was after in the first place. I do have other body trimming to do with the fender flare area just to make sure that I get full clearance for the tires during their entire movement of the suspension cycle. I am also going to add a windshield, side rear windows, and a actual rear window to this body. I took and cut up that original cliffhanger body that I had on here, and just am going to use the individual panels to become the new you know, windshield and rear windows. I've already done that, but I do need to decide how I'm going to attach them to the body. I haven't played with that at all yet, so I need to find what adhesive is going to be uh, the best choice for that to you know permanently bond in place. The battery that you saw sitting underneath of that interior there is a new uh, Tattoo 850 3S, so a nice small battery pack. These battery packs arrived today. They're nice and small. 850 milliamps will be plenty to get through a competition course. I'll make sure and top them off after every run or swap out to a fresh one. But uh, again, these are going to be plenty of power for this type of truck during these competition courses, even with the rear steer setup. The truck is coming along, still a number of things to do. Uh, before I put the receiver up there, I bought a JST connector and a servo extension that I'm going to get put into place and kind of pigtailed to the rear of the chassis. That way I can easily swap in the rear steer axle for class three. That way I don't have to try and make it all the way into the receiver, which will be tucked in underneath of the uh, interior, just trying to make it easier on myself. C3 is the day after C2, so I've got plenty of time, but just one little thing to think about to try and make my life a little bit easier. When I had these rear body plates made, I also had some thin titanium roof racks made, and I do hope to get that attached to the body as well. These are thin, they're pretty light. It'll also give me a place to mount that uh, roof mounted winch point while spreading the load throughout the body a little bit better. Just a little bit extra. Also helps protect the carbon fiber, which I do like the look of. So a little bit of extra protection isn't a bad thing. I still have a lot of other little details to do. I'm, I've got to make inner fenders for this to try and get that cleaned up a little bit. I want to set up uh, two more sets of wheels and tires for this truck with a couple of different tire options. That way when I get to Alabama, I can do some testing with some different setups without having to dismount and remount new tires and foams. Just 
quick swaps from one to the other. I've got a few different sets of Crawl Innovations foams on their way, as well as some new tires, you know, more options. Just wanna have everything as prepared as possible. But that does it for the class two, three talk. Let's jump over to the C1. The class one has continued to work towards the completion as well. You will see now for the first time that the other carbon fiber front fender is done, leaving us only this hood section and the rear left to complete. The rear though, I did start on and I got one corner of the rear completed. It's right here actually. Now I still have to do some trimming. The you know tail light itself has to get cut out. I do hope to get this finished up, mounted on there so I can figure out what else needs to be uh, finished. I've started printing the molds for the other corner already. That will only leave me the, I've been calling it the roll pan section to get done, as well as a tailgate. I still have to get a tailgate <laughs> finished somehow, uh, you know. And then the hood, the hood is the hood. I am running out of time. I am absolutely running out of time. This, uh, a mold the size of this hood is no short order either. It's... A lot of print time. There's probably going to be four or five days worth of print time for just the mold to do this hood. So it's it's got me a little worried, I'm not gonna lie. Um, now, now with that, I really like the kind of orange contrast that the hood has. And I'm not just making an excuse. I am making an excuse, but I'm not just making an excuse. Uh, the reason that I say that is twofold. One, if I don't get the hood molded and finished, I, I don't hate this look. I wouldn't mind running something that looks very similar to this. Whether it is a different 3D print that's sanded and smoothed and then painted orange, that's an option. But if I do get the molds done and I do get a chance to mold the hood in this forged carbon as well, I purchased some orange chopped e-glass. What that is, is fibers similar to the chopped toe carbon that I use here, but you just take some of that glass and you put it in the mix with it so that it gives you that pop of orange right in with it. Could be cool. Or it could be a massive failure, look terrible, and cause me more delays and possibly bad parts. Who's to tell? I don't know. I don't know, but you know, I ordered it. Who knows how it's gonna ship here? Who knows if it's gonna get here in time? Will I get to it anyway? No idea, I'm freaking out but trying to gather some composure. Uh, the front of the truck is otherwise assembled. We've got the windowed panels all installed with the mesh appropriately. The inner fender versions with the mesh also installed both sides of the truck finally. Um, adds a nice little, little pop to those inner wheel well areas. The winch is installed, the steering servo is installed, the Vanquish Q series headlights are installed into the titanium front grille. Now, that titanium front grille is not installed. That whole setup is just kind of setting in there. That titanium grille is gonna get welded to the titanium bumper, which is also completed. But I wanted to get everything in place, make some final decisions before I go through and tack weld uh, that grill to the bumper. Uh, the bumper, like I said, it is completed. It's 3 16 titanium that runs from outside to outside. The width is a little bit wider, about a quarter inch wider than the width of the windshield, which is the rule. I added, you know, the outside kind of push bar to it, which is out in front of the front of the tires which is another rule for class one. I added some 0.5 millimeter plate to the front side here to give myself a little bit of deflection. That was pretty tricky to weld to the 3 16 to, or, you know, solid rod, but fun to, fun to learn, fun to try. And then I added a piece of eighth inch titanium rod that I bent in a U, and that is my fair lead for my winch line. So uh, that, 
classifies as a fair lead because it acts as one. It doesn't have to look like a traditional one to get the scale point. Also, you'll see the eighth inch bar around the top side there, which matches the look of the hood. And that acts as a grill guard, which will help protect, hopefully a carbon fiber hood, hopefully. It's yet to be seen, but it's possible. Um, so it's also a scale point. The Q series bolt right through the bolt pattern on the front of that titanium grill. I'll probably change out those pieces of hardware to scale hardware just because. The LS engine model is permanently affixed into the vehicle as well, both the top half and the bottom half to give me that 3D motor look. And the big thing was is that I couldn't really get all of this stuff assembled. Well, I could have, but ideally, to get everything in here, I wanted to have the electronics in this vehicle first, and that is also finished. The Holmes Hobbies electronics came in. I put the Crawlmaster Magnum Stubby 13 turn motor. It's a brushed motor, same thing I'm running in my class two. That is installed in here in the VFD, and I wired that up, got the motor wires soldered to it, and then all of the motor wires and electronics, you know, from the servos and winch headlights, they all run rearward underneath of the transmission tunnel. And I made a carbon fiber plate that goes just behind the transmission. A couple of pieces of 3D printed material and then a nice carbon fiber plate gives me a big shelf that runs underneath of the two seats. And there's about 10 or 15 millimeters of area there where I can fit everything as far as height wise. Everything's nice and hidden, but to access all of it, it's just two screws. I can take the interior out with just two screws. One, you can kind of just see it there underneath of the slider. One there, one on the other side, and then that whole interior pan just comes out. There's some 3D printed framework underneath of that Lexan tunnel piece, and it just allows everything to be screwed in together, screwed down. The interior's super solid. It's just, uh, a pretty nice setup. I'm actually pretty happy with that. But we've talked about a lot of those electronics pieces. One thing we haven't talked about is the battery. And the battery is actually installed in here right now. Maybe you saw it as I was twisting and twirling it and, and whatnot. But currently, it's actually sitting. It's sitting a little bit crooked right now, but it's sitting under here under the dash. It had fallen down a little bit. Um, this is another Gen Zace or Tattoo brand 3S, but a 650 LiPo. This battery being a 650 is even smaller than the 850, go figure. But this, again, for a class one should be plenty. If you remember earlier in this series, I ran a competition with my class two and each comp course, I only burned 150, 200 milliamps per course. So these with the C rating should be just fine. Let's hope. The other option for hiding the battery was going to be underneath of the rear seat that I put in here. But even though it's light, I'd like to have the weight more forward. Up here, I can actually fit it up behind the dash. It's almost completely hidden. If I wanna make a cover, which I probably will, I'll make it look something like the heater core that you would see in an old CJ underneath of the dash. And it's not going to look all that intrusive. If you don't know what you're looking at, it probably won't even look odd. Now, the dash that I keep referring to, as you can see, is temporarily installed in there and it's orange. It's the same orange one that you've been seeing, but this is only a temporary version. I did send that model to Westmade finally and he already got it printed and already got it detailed and back in the mail on its way to me. I don't know anything about it. I haven't seen a photo. I don't know what it looks like other than this is the model that I sent him and we'll see what the one that's finished comes back looking like. No matter what, I'm excited to see. So thanks to Westmade, Westmade Builds, you can see him on YouTube and Instagram, everything like that. Thanks to him for helping me out and making the build look even a little bit better. Other details that we haven't fully discussed yet, the carbon twill side panels are what's staying on there. Doing forged carbon fiber or buying forged carbon sheet wasn't going to look anything like the other forged carbon parts that I had already completed. So it was still going to be kind of a, a mix of looks and I just didn't feel like that was going to be worth the cost, which has added up significantly on this truck um, or the, the headache that it was going to be to try and make them myself. So for now, 
and honestly probably forever, the carbon twill is what will be on here. And I'm fine with that because there's a lot of it on the truck as well. The sides, the roof, the interior, the firewall, and a couple of other pieces that are yet to go in here will all be of that, that same style. So I did get the windshield glued in place. I used the glue in glaze deluxe that Matt suggested to me, ordered it, showed up super easy, dries completely clear, which was, you know, the goal. It looks like I knew what I was doing somehow. I need to get the rear seat done. The model I got from Knight Customs, by the when I resized it, it wasn't going to end up printing properly because of how it scaled the wall thicknesses too. I need to kind of get back to that, figure out how to get that done and in here so that it looks proper. Uh, I did get the rear inner fender wells painted and installed for the final time. I haven't painted the transmission tunnel yet though. Getting taillights sorted for the rear, still a thing. And some finishing wiring is, is another, not gonna be a huge task, but one of those things that has to get done. Like the C2, I also am going to set up two more sets of wheels and tires for this truck to make sure that I've got options so I can go do some testing. I also plan to do some playing around with the offsets to get this thing as narrow as possible, but it was still the amount of weight that I wanna have on here. And I need to get the fender flares done because I have to have half the tire clearance you know, for C1 rules. Now, those, something I, I need to get to soon to try and make sure that they're gonna you know be on there reasonably secure so that I don't rip them off on course. Current weight on this truck as it sits is just under seven pounds. So I've added a lot of stuff to it. You know, it, I did lose track a little bit of really trying to make this ultra competitive and I just kind of went with what I really wanted to build, but uh, it still didn't end up bad in the weight area. Seven pounds is pretty much what I was expecting to be around and I'm glad I landed right about there. Again, there is some things that still need to find their way in here, but most of the major components are already living on the truck. I do need to go through and calculate scale points to make sure that I'm in some sort of shape for each of these. Maybe we should do that quickly. Starting with the class two, this thing should get full hard body points, which is negative 12. I get metal front and rear bumper points, which is negative three each. The front also has a stinger and I've got a fair lead on there that will go towards a functional point later. I plan to install the metal roof rack on here. Front chassis mounted servo gives us negative five. The VFD transmission counts as a functional transfer case and gives you negative four scale points. This is a full five seat interior, which is negative five scale points. We have a front winch installed for negative two, and then we get negative six points for the four seat metal interior cage. That puts us at negative 43. Now I did talk about wanting to put a small roll bar in the back here, which if I do that, it gives me negative two since it would be metal. And then we didn't add any points for realistic exterior items or functional scale points. For functional items, we do have the fair lead installed already. The rear oil fill cap on the F10s is functional and is a scale item. So for the non-functional scale points, at this point we have the shifters and pedals in the interior. So that's two items. And lastly, we have brake rotors all the way around. You have to have both axles completed, which we do. So with that included, we are at the negative 50 scale points that we need for both class two and class three. And that's still without adding the inner fenders that I plan to add. I've got extra points that will be there just in case. Now, class one, we need 60 points total. So to start with, we're gonna do full hard body. This should absolutely classify as a custom full hard body. We're gonna leave that off for right now though. This does have inner fenders front and rear already. We have metal front and rear bumpers. The front has a grill guard on it for an additional point. We do have metal sliders on this currently for negative three. Fabricated 3D shock towers. Now the rear should count for that in this case because they are welded. We get one point for that since we only have the rears done. We do have a chassis mounted servo as well as the functional transfer case again. And we've got the 3D motor, which is four scale points. Interior, once I have the rear bench seat in there, we'll get a four seat interior again. Then this will have headlights and tail lights and a front winch. And then getting to the cage part, we'll have a two row interior cage, which will give us 
negative six points. And that brings us to negative 53. Now that's without the custom hard body points, just the regular hard body points. So we only need seven additional points. With the accessories area that we haven't really counted anything for, the realistic exterior items, we will have brake rotors all the way around for one point. We've already got the shifters and the interior for another. We have the same rear oil fill cap for a functional item. We've got the front fair lead for another. We also have the fuel cell molded into the VS410 chassis. And with that, we're already at 58. Again, still not counting the custom hard body points, which I think that this arguably should get. I will not have a hard time stretching this to 60 scale points very easily. That makes me feel better just knowing I don't have a bunch of other, you know, sleeping bags and firewood to make. Also, this could technically, we could say has a, you know, SUV cargo area for the interior, which I think gives us another point, which would we'd be at 59 already. So I feel pretty confident on that part of this at the very least. So as the rushed tone of my voice must lead you to believe, uh, I've got a lot to get accomplished still. I am nervous. Two weeks goes awfully fast. I've been spending a ton of time bouncing back and forth from one truck to the next, feeling like I'm behind on this one and going to this one, feeling like I'm behind and just back and forth, ping-ponging around. An ADD nightmare, but it's getting there. Um, I'm starting to feel like they look like trucks. They don't feel like they're that far away from being trucks. I almost feel like I can drive them. I want to thank you all for hanging around for both of these builds. Uh, it's been a process. So we're not through it yet. We're in the home stretch though. I am really looking forward to it. At the event, I do plan to try and shoot daily update videos. And there's also still one more video update to come on these right before the event. So that one should give you the final picture of what both of these trucks look like. Looking forward to it. And after the event, they're both just going on eBay. I'm sick of looking at them. Put your bids in the comments. Thanks as always for watching. Make sure and come watch Livestream Takeover every Wednesday, 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern, or we'll be talking about these trucks and events and uh, what we've got going on, how exciting it is to be almost ready for this event. Thanks for watching as always. Hit the like button if you enjoy them. Subscribe if you're not already. Hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in two weeks.